to under present here. Today I am going to take a lecture on the beam deflection. You know what is a deflection? So deflection plays a major role in the case of the serviceability condition of any structures. It may be a right concrete structure or it may be of steel structures. So we have to go for the serviceability like the deflection of beams. Okay, so normally the deflection of beams is coming under as the span divided by 250 to 300, where L is the span of the beam. So here I am talking about the deflection of beams. You know that a simple, simply supported beam, which is supported at A and B, and loaded with the combination of load, either union or the point load or in combination. So definitely you will get a slope which is known as theta A and theta B or you can take the notation as YA or YB you can use that notation also and the second thing is you can go and find the deflection of any point on the B it may be either middle or L by 4 or 3 fourth of L Okay, so these are the two major things we are going to find in the deflection of beams. Right? So first I will say what are the methods are available to find the deflection of beams. There are normally four methods are generally used. The first important method which is called as the double integration method. It's the simplest method, but you can use it only for a simple loading and continuous loading. If the load is discontinuous on the beam, so you cannot use the first method, it is double integration method. The second method, which is called as the Nuttall's method. So if the load is a discontinuous one, so W1, W2, then UDL, partial UDL, or UDL load, you can use the Nuttall's method. That is, you are going to take by BGN by BGN. Okay, suppose I am having a discontinuous load. So W1, W2, W3 in addition to UDL, right? So I am taking the region C, this I call as AC, then CD, DE, and EB. Okay, right? So this is nothing but the extension of the double integration method. So I will explain detail while coming to the second method of Right, Macaulay's method. And third method is, which is called as the area moment method or moment area method, or the other name is the more circuit method. Okay, so this method is used or utilized if the load is a complicated one and the moment of energy of the section right, is varying. So I to be varying means definitely, right, the section is also varying. So for example, if you are having the beam like this, I am having a cross section at one point and another point will be a different one. So in that case, you cannot use the double division or the mechanist method. Definitely you can go for the third method. So for example, it is I and Q I. That is, if the cross section is very Definitely, the moment of energy is very easy. So naturally, we have to go for the area moment method or the more central method. And the fourth method, which is called as conjugate beam method. So it is used for very complicated loading on the beams. Right? So the three methods you can be able to find, definitely you can go for the conjugate beam method. So that is the fourth method. And the last two methods are the strain energy method and the column analysis method. So even the strain energy you can use to find the deflection and slope. So strain energy you know is nothing but the product of work done, work done. So work done is nothing but the of W into delta. So if you are integrating the strain energy stored is equal to work done, you can find the deflection. You know that deflection is nothing but you are delta or y max. Okay, so you have to form the relation where so that you can find the deflection at any required point. So these are the basic methods of use to find the deflection on the beam. So now we here we are using the word which is called as the EI. EI is something that 
the fractional rigidity of the beam. Fractional rigidity of the beam. Fractional rigidity. Okay, you'll start. Okay, now directly we will go into the problem of Maclellan's method of diffraction. I have already told you the Maclellan's method of diffraction is nothing but the extension of double integration method for the discontinuous load. I have taken two discontinuous load, five load, which is at a distance small a from either support. So for that, in the case of double integration method, we have used the bending moment equation Mx is equal to E i t square y by d x square. So E a is nothing but the fractional rigidity of the beam. So in the case of the implementation method, if only one load is there or full union throughout the beam, you can use it. But here there are two discontinuous loads. So I will go for naturally the double intervention method extension, that is Maclellan's method of deflection. Okay, now we can write the basic equation of bending moment. E i d square y by d x square is equal to m x, where m x is the bending moment at the required section. So I have to form three different equations. So one is in between the section A C, the second section is in between the section C D, and third section you have to take in between the section D B. But you can write in the same equation for a discontinuous load with the Maclellan's method. So whatever be the region is applicable, right, for the first region, AC means you can take only the first term of this equation. Now you take EA d square by by b x square is equal to, right, so what is the bending moment I have taken section? So I will take the left hand side of the section, the bending moment at section x1 is W into x1, I have taken the distance of small x1. So that's why I mentioned as W x1. Okay, so this is for the first engine. Similarly, you have to form the bending moment equation for the second engine. So already for the first engine, the bending moment x is as W into x1. So you have to write the second term by putting what is that? The partition line in the case of Maclellan's method. Now you get the second engine bending moment. What is that? Already this W into x1 is existing. The remaining is minus y minus because it is anti-clockwise moment. So that's why I have to take here minus minus W into this section. What is this distance? You know, this is X2, right? This is A. So X2 minus A. Then from the third region means you put a partition line. So in the partition line, the third point is at least at a distance, X3 from this distance, this is called as X3, third region. I am putting a dotted line. Again, this already these two bending moments are existing. The third one is what is this? This minus W adding of this kind. So minus W into right x3 minus 2a. The distance we have to calculate this I am taking this a and actually this is L minus 2a. If you simplify it, you will get this value. So this is called as general equation. I call it as right 1a for a given span of the beam and loading. Then you integrate once, you will get the slope equation. So this is something about the slope equation. So integrate once, what will happen? Dy dy by dx. What indicates dy by dx? It is nothing but the slope of the given beam. Right? So dy by dx is equal to, you can integrate. If you are integrating it, you will get, I am putting for the first region 0 to a. This applicable. So W into X1. Then for the second region, what you are getting? So dot line minus you integrate it. So you are getting the slope equation finally. So that is I call that equation number two. Then the third equation is the diffraction equation. So integrate once again the slope equation. You will get E I integral D Y by dx. That is the thing but Y. Where Y is the <coughs> diffraction of the beam is equal to so w square by 2 plus constant of integration already we have taken then we have to go for one more constant of integration that is c2 okay so now our aim is to determine the constant c1 and c2 in the given slope and deflection equations once you are able to calculate the 
C1 and C2, that is function of integration, you substitute in the slope and diffraction equation. Diffraction equation is the equation of the So now we have to calculate the value of C1, C2. How to calculate the constant of integration C1 and C2? So that will depends upon the boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions you know already. So I will support A, right? The deflection is zero. At A, that's, I will write as x is equal to zero, and it is again, right? Oy is equal to zero. Deflection is zero, but the slope will not be zero. Okay? Similarly, at the last point of the beam, that is again, the slope is there, but you have the deflection. So you don't have the deflection, that is, deflection is zero. I will write as the third condition, y is equal to zero, that is at B, when x is equal to the n raised power of the B, that is x is equal to L. Or you can use the other boundary condition. What is that? So this is a symmetrically loaded thing. Okay? So if you are taking the diffraction, definitely you will get the maximum diffraction at the center because of symmetrical loading. So whenever the beam is symmetrical, the diffraction will be always right maximum at the center or mid span. But at that point, the slope will be zero for a maximum reflection position. So that's why I have an an x is equal to the point, that is x is equal to L by Q, right? The slope d by dx is zero. So based on these three boundary conditions, definitely you can find the right slope at A, then slope at B. Similarly, you can find the slope at middle point, that is when span is equal to L by Q, definitely it will be zero. That is a known to us. But we have to find theta A and theta B. Right? Then we have to find the diffraction at the midpoint point either. Right? Diffraction at the midpoint. Right? I call it as y max. That also you can find it by substituting x is equal to L by 2. You put x is equal to L by 2, right? In the so with this diffraction equation, definitely you can find y max. So that is possible. Definitely you can find it. So this is the general procedure for the slope and deflection determination in the case of McCallis method. So the McCallis method can be adopted when the load is having a discontinuity for the entire beam of the span. So this is about the deflection method using the McCallis method of deflection. Thank you.